is our birthday, and it's a great day to look back, but also to look forward at all that God is going to do, and to keep our hearts aligned with the great commission that Jesus gave to his followers to help people find and follow him. Well, 14 years ago, Tara and I made three phone calls to some of our closest friends and said, we are thinking about starting a church. Would you be willing to help us? And they hemmed and hawed, I'm sure, for a little while, not knowing exactly what they were getting into or what any of us were getting into. But we had no idea that how those phone calls would change the course of our lives in the most wonderful way. Uh, but we had a dream for a new kind of church, a church full of people who would lead with blessing in their communities, a church where no perfect people would be allowed. And so if you're here and you're perfect, get out of here. A church full of people who would sacrifice their personal preferences for the benefit of others. People who would lead with love instead of judgment. People who would serve and give and sacrifice with eternity in mind. And 13 years later, I am blown away at all that God has done and so incredibly grateful that you are a part of it. So incredibly grateful that every single one of you are a part of it. Now we know that life is lived forward, but really we understand it in reverse. Isn't that true? It's oftentimes as we look back on our life that we begin to understand what that season of life was all about. It's, it's when we look back that we gain appreciation. It's when the lessons are learned and when we can see the changes that have taken place in us. And this last year, God has done some amazing things in us and some amazing things through us. And so we put together a little video to show you just a snip bit of what this looked like over the last 12 months. And I wish we had a couple hours where we could just show you all the things that were taking place here at Riverway. But this will give you a great idea as we look back with appreciation of all that God has done. Check out this year in review video. Here it is. Happy 13th birthday, Riverway! Happy birthday, Riverway! Happy birthday! Happy birthday, Riverway! 13 years! Happy birthday, Riverway! Happy 13 years! Happy birthday, Riverway! Happy birthday, Riverway! Happy birthday, Riverway! Happy 13 years! Happy birthday, Riverway! Happy birthday, Riverway! Happy birthday, Riverway! Happy birthday, Riverway! 13! Happy birthday, Riverway! Happy birthday, Riverway! Happy birthday, Happy Riverway. birthday, Riverway. 13 years. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Riverway. Happy 13th birthday. Happy birthday, Riverway. Happy birthday, Riverway. Happy, birthday, Riverway. Riverway. Happy 13 years. 13. Happy 13 years. You're a teenager. Happy birthday, Riverway. And it's the 13th, my favorite number. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Riverway. Happy birthday, Riverway. Happy 13 years. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Riverway. Happy birthday, Riverway. I can't believe we've got to this point and I've avoided the birthday video for 13 years and you finally caught me. What do you love about church? Uh, Why do you come every week? Uh, because? <laughs> because, yes. I love the people that we've met and getting to, to find more community here. The connections and friendships that we've made through our small groups, our life groups, we've made so many close friends. Church is about the people. People here are wonderful. Jeez. <laughs> I just love our uh, saying, no perfect people allowed, because it, seems, it makes everybody feel welcome. I think we really stand by the no perfect people allowed. I love the acceptance, the sermons. I love Riverway because it always, when you walk in, it always like it's like a delight to see people like welcoming you in. You're not like feeling outside in your own world. We've been here since the beginning and it's been amazing. I love watching everybody grow up. Riverway and youth, I love meeting new people and getting closer to God. The people here, it's just so welcoming. How friendly the church is. Come and visit us. <laughs> the people. I love the connection. I love the relationship with all the pastors. The people are the favorite thing about Riverway. Yep. They're the best. You are the best. I love the 
the fellowship that takes place between services and after service. It's like a second home to me. Um, I get to just see everybody. I get to hang out. It's like it's home. It helped me find my faith in God, and it's helped me grow so much in more ways than just my faith. The community, Fearless Moms, is awesome to be a part of. I love the community of Riverway, just the chance for kids to get to spend time with other kids, walk in their faith journey. We love Kids Church. We love that there's such an amazing community for our kids and that our kids get to grow up with such a good faith foundation. So I can learn about God. I love the kids' classes. They're really fun. The youth group and base camp. We love having the family programs for both us as adults, the small groups, and also for the kids. The youth groups and the uh, Riverway Kids programs are awesome. In our culture, we have replaced the word soul with self. These two things carry a totally different connotation. We put so much reliance on self and we haven't recognized that really what matters is the condition of our soul. We can be busy our entire life taking care of what people see on the outside while ignoring the lifeblood who we are. If you've been married longer than a honeymoon, you know that there are going to be times that you fail your spouse, right? And whatever the argument, whatever the battles are that go between you, what we don't realize is this, is that over time, we begin to build a wall between each other. She won't spend enough time with me. She's so selfish. I'm so angry that time that I caught him in a lie. And he did, his pride was so much that he couldn't even admit it. And we just went around and around in circles. How do you tear down that wall? Little, little history lesson for you too. The younger people are like, what is he talking about? Anybody ever have any student loans coming out of college? That wasn't real great, right? Having to deal with that. And you know the car payment, because you gotta have the car payment, right? And then there's the house payment maybe a kid. Oh, kids come along, kids one or two, and, and suddenly, you know, you're, you're saying, oh, we got to upgrade a few things in our life. We really need, you know, direct TV, and we need really get a nicer boat, and we got to get a nicer thing, and, and so we really begin to fill our lives financially. We overcommit, and we overspend, and we underplan. I want to suggest a way that we can begin to declutter our finances. Because as we make room and space for those things, the freedom is euphoric. You're like, oh, I'm free to do the things that I want to do, free to do the things that God's asking me to do. I just love Riverway's Heart for the Community, all the stuff that we do outside the church walls. My husband and I have been here for 10 years, and I love what we do in our community. Riverway, we want to say thank you. What an amazing day. Thank you again for being the church. It is so fun to be a part of this thing with you, and just can't believe all that God is doing through us together. This gets you out of yourself by doing this because you're serving other people. You're not just serving yourself. It was a whole new world to just see all these helpers, all these people coming together. The love that everybody had for each other in the community and to see everybody just come together and do that and be happy to do it was good. <laughs>
We're new to Riverway, but we love it. We just we love we, the we, teaching. We love the music. We wish we would have been here 13 years ago to experience the whole 13 years. <laughs> the people, our worship's great. The music, I love the word. I love the worship. It is off the chain. Love working with the band. They're a lot of fun to work with. What's up, everybody? I'm Ben. This is Amy, Addison, and Haley. We just want to say we love worshiping with you guys. I always sounds so amazing every single Sunday. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. There is no one like you. There is none. really unsure of what was gonna go on today. We're just unbelievably grateful for Riverway and, and how they blessed our family. I feel so fortunate. This is life changing. Amazing, so grateful. On video, but you've bounced around almost 20 different hotels. hotels. So we are very excited to let you know that we have secured a townhouse right in Champlin. It's three bedrooms. <laughs> so gracious giving to people that you don't know. I mean, we're strangers. Thank you. It's unbelievable to know that so many people love and care. It's a miracle, I guess, yeah. It's a miracle, it really is. I'm just grateful for your generosity and for your kindness. In people's darkest moments, Riverway offers light. We're blessed for that. It means a new start. It means that we can actually get back on our feet and I was diagnosed with multiple myeloma, um, blood cancer, and got kidney cancer as well. This really is a full circle moment. You've been up on the stage for seven years thanking everybody for Miracle Sunday, sending your family on a trip uh, to any beach you want to go to. If you want to go to the Smoky Mountains, if you want to go to Disney, it does not matter. The rental car for your tickets, your food, entertainment, we're going to cover everything for your family. I can't begin to express in words how grateful we are for everybody that took part in this. Thank you. Thank you so much. It really, really, really helped us out. It's going to change our life dramatically. You have no idea. For the better. <laughs> for the better, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. This is incredible. Amazing 13 years, see it from the ground up. Now we're really seeing it from the ground up with the new building. It's amazing. You know, great churches are not built on the talents of a few, but on the sacrifices of many. It's many people that say, God, we want to help make a difference that will last for all of eternity, and that is what you are doing. I'm looking forward to that building being filled with your friends, with your neighbors, with your coworkers, with your family members, with your kids, who will be impacted by the love and grace of God. Happy birthday, Riverway. Happy 13 years. Happy, happy 13, 13 years. years. Happy birthday, happy 13 years. Happy 13 years. <laughs> we just want to say happy year 13. 13 years. Happy 13 years. Happy 13 years, Riverway. Happy 13th year, Riverway. We love you. Yes, we do. Happy 13 years, Riverway. Happy birthday, Riverway. Happy 13 years. Happy 13 years. Happy 13 years, Riverway. Happy 13 years, we love you. Happy birthday. Well, we can clap for that. I don't know about you, but every time I see the egg hunt in the snow, a little piece of me dies. I don't know about you guys, 
I get depressed every time I see that, and I just think, well, maybe next year it will be nice weather. There will be no snow on the ground. Well, it's just amazing to look back. What an amazing year that God has done, and so much in our lives, in our kids, in our teens, uh, through our groups, in our community. And now I'm wondering, who is ready for Riverway 2.0? Are you ready? Are you getting buckled up? Because this is going to be an amazing year in front of us. And if you are newer to Riverway, you picked a great time to be a part of this church as we embark on this brand new chapter, a chapter that we've dreamed about for 13 years, a church and a place that would be more than a building, a place that is full of hope and a place that is a continuous blessing to those around us. And that is why from the very beginning as, as us four couples sat around 14 years ago, from the very beginning, we always talked about that one day, if God allows us to build a building, we won't just build a building, we're gonna build a church and a community center. A place that can be a blessing to our city seven days a week. A place that will truly be a lighthouse in our city. A place that will re reach hundreds and hundreds of people every single week with the love and redemption of Jesus. And a chapter that in seven months from now, hard to believe, seven months from now will become a reality. And I am so excited for our kids to have their own dedicated space. And just this week, I got to put on my hard hat and got to walk around as they're beginning to wall up and frame in some of our kids' wing. And it's just incredible to walk through there to go, oh my goodness, for them to have their own safe and secure and clean and bright space it was so incredible. Uh, I'm excited what this is gonna mean for our next generation of teenagers as they come and as they continue to reach more and more teens in our community. Excited for our reach into our communities. Uh, but this is one thing that I know that this next chapter in front of us, it's going to stretch and grow all of us. It really is. It's gonna stretch and grow all of us. And I know sometimes the temptation is to look around a room like this and say, yeah, it's gonna stretch and grow them and I'm just gonna be along for the ride. And I'd say, no, 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 no. We are all in this together. We're all in this together. Oh, we should open with that tune. We're all in this together. We really, really are. It's gonna take all of us to be stretched and grown in this season. A chapter that will unfold new ways that God is going to use all of us to reach our communities. It really is gonna take all of us. And here's the charge that Jesus gave to his followers. And I love this in Matthew chapter five, verse 14. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Isn't that powerful? You are the light of the world. If you're a follower of Jesus, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. And I love this challenge from Jesus that he says to every one of us that we are the light. But here's the amazing thing about light is that it impacts everybody around us, whether they want the light or think they want the light or need the light or don't want the light. Light impacts everybody, doesn't it? Light impacts everyone. Light expels darkness. Light illum brings illumination so people can see clearly and here's Jesus' challenge. He says, don't hide your light. Don't hide your light as individuals. Don't hide your light as a church. No, no, no. Don't hide what I've done in your life. Don't hide your hope. Don't hide your good deeds. Instead, put your light on its stand. Put your light on its stand for all to see. Put your good works on its stand. Put your love on its stand. Put your life change on its stand so others may see it. And their hearts would go, wait a second, there's something happening in their life that I want to happen in my life. There's something that's happening in their kids that I want to happen in my kids. There's something happening in their teenager that I want to happen in my teenager. There's something that's happening in that church that I want to be a part of. 
God says, as your light begins to shine, it actually draws people to him. It brings illumination to maybe what they haven't yet experienced. And this is why Riverway Church exists, for people to find and follow Jesus. To find and follow Jesus. And we know that blessing always opens people's hearts. And that is why we want this building to be another extension of the blessing that we've already been a part of for more than 13 years. And I gotta tell you, we've been working really hard as a staff and as a team to build structures and framework to build these things and attach them to the dreams that have been in our heart for more than 13 years. And I know that God is gonna raise up so many of you and use your giftings and your abilities to help reach more people for him. In fact, just last month, as our staff, we had, we had a staff retreat, and so there's 25 of us, and we're sitting around, and we're, we're talking about the future. We're talking about Riverway 2.0 and all of the things that maybe we'd be able to do once this building is built. And I gotta tell you, we've been a little bit limited being kind of a homeless church. Every single Sunday was set up and tear down, and our operations center we've had the last few years has been a great addition, but we've never had our own home a place where we can do ministry seven days a week. And so some of the things that we talked about 13 years ago were some of the same things that we talked about even last month. Things like a food and clothing distributions to those around us in need. Being a host site for blood drives and other community endeavors to help those around us. Community theater, daycare and preschool, job training, daddy-daughter dances, back to school day where we can help those that need free backpacks and free haircuts and free shoes going into the school year. Hosting our city and our schools for specific events and for training. Special outreaches to the apartments that are right behind our building and so much more. I mean, I could take the next hour to talk about some of the dreams that are in our heart and all this to say that we have some amazing opportunities in front of us. Amazing opportunities that are gonna come our way with this building, but I gotta tell you that this is, without a doubt, the biggest faith step we have ever taken as a church. This is the biggest step financially we have ever taken. In fact, the financial investment that we're making is huge. And, I want, and so I wanna remind you that you're giving in this season has never been more important. You may think that your contribution doesn't matter, and I'm here to tell you that it does. That God is using it to help us reach more people around us. And if you don't have a plan to financially support your church every single month, would you please consider that? Would you consider saying, hey, I wanna get on board with what God is doing, and I want my giving to play a part? It is really gonna take all of us to be financially involved to make this home for all a reality. And so many of you have already been making sacrifices when two and a half years ago, we launched a capital campaign to raise $2 million towards this home of ours. And I wanted to give you a quick financial update on where we are at. And so two, year, two and a half years ago, we started this campaign called Home for All. And the building that's being built right now it is in large part because of the pledges that they came in. The bank said, all right, you've got pledges. We are gonna loan you this money to begin building this building. And as of today, we are at 1.73 million. And so we continue to inch closer to where we need to be. Yes, we can clap for that. That is exciting. And that number represents the sacrifice of everybody because this is above people's regular giving. This is saying, God, we're gonna sacrifice above that to make this a reality for generation after generation after generation to come because this building's gonna outlive all of us and it's still gonna be there making a difference in people's lives. So we're getting closer and closer to that goal and my hope and prayer is by the end of this year that that $2 million has been reached. And so if you are already giving your fulfilling pledges, please continue to do that. If we can shore them up by the end of the year, that'd be so strong. And if you're not giving yet to Home for All, but you want to, above your regular giving, there should be in all of our giving platforms, there's a place that says Home for All, and you can give right there. And every dollar is helping put up another board. Every dollar is putting in another brick to help this building become a reality. We've also been working hard over the past year to trim every expense we can 
to be able to afford this new home and continue the ministry expansion. Many of the things that I just got done sharing. The things that are hard to do. It's one thing to have dreams. It's another thing to have the finances to do those things for your community. Isn't that the truth? And so some of the things that we've already cut back, you maybe haven't necessarily seen or felt, but one thing that we know is not scalable as the church continues to grow is to provide donuts for everyone every single Sunday. And when we look at the ministry opportunities in front of us, when I look at the people that need to be reached, we know that the money that we're spending on donuts, which is quite a bit, can be used in better areas for more ministry impact. And this isn't a fun decision, but in this season, our budgets have to be mission critical. Mission critical. So beginning after next Sunday, we'll be shifting our donuts from every week to special occasion Sundays. And so they'll be making their, their way back. Today we're having cupcakes instead of donuts, in case you didn't notice. And, and honestly, there's no nutritional difference, so you don't need to worry. <laughs> And so as we make this shift, even in our donuts, we've decided that you as parents would be better to tell your kids than us. And uh, so good luck with that. Uh, and actually, we just wanted to give you the opportunity to be the fun parents that would stop for donuts on their way to church every week from now on. And, and maybe as they're eating their cupcake today, you could tell them. I don't know. Maybe as they're eating sugar, things will process better. I don't know. That would be good for them. But don't worry. We will still have our caffeination station, which means free coffee for all every single week. We will still get you caffeinated. But you know, all of our sacrifices, even small ones like donuts, are leading to more and more people being blessed. More and more people who are hearing the good news that there's a God in heaven who loves them. A God in heaven who sent his son to die for them. Where forgiveness is available and purpose in life is reachable and tangible. And this is what our mission and our future is all about. And if you haven't driven by the building lately, we wanted to show you some video because there's some exciting things that are happening. I wanna show you this video of the latest progress. As you can see, our parking lot has been poured, our curbing has been poured, a lot of our utilities are already in. And what primarily has been happening over the last two weeks is that entire wood structure on the right side of the building, that is our entire kids' wing that is being built right now. Uh, which we're so excited about. And this last week, as I got to walk it and tour it, the one thing that stood out to me is that in every classroom, we have huge windows with bright light, sunlight coming in. And I just can't wait for that because we've been using dingy classrooms for many, many years. We are grateful to school, but it's gonna be so much better and so much different. And uh, so it's just been fun to see this exterior continue to go up. And if you get a chance, drive by there so that you can see it. But walls and framing are gonna continue through mid-October when by then we hope to have the entire building enclosed, windows and doors and everything's going to be enclosed. And even in the next couple of weeks, you're also gonna see the remainder of the tree line along 169 all be cleared out, the ditch cleared out so that we have straight sight lines to the building, which is gonna help us so much. And then as we get that building enclosed over the winter, construction is going to be on the inside of the building at a very rapid pace. During this time, you're going to be hearing about new serving opportunities, new systems, new visions as we get closer to our grand opening. And here's what I'm praying for. I am praying that, that God would awaken new dreams and passions inside of you to leverage your time, your ability, your resources to lead the way in reaching more people for Jesus. Because this isn't my church, this is your church. This is our church, and God wants to use you to reach people. And so our target month for the grand opening is still March of this next spring. And what's amazing to me is, and this is so great, because just when the depression from NFL football ending for the year sets in, we will have something to reinvigorate us. We're going to be invigorated once again to see this building come to life. And in our rotunda today, we have two roof trusses that will be going into the new building. And after this service, I'd like you to go out there and I'd like for you to begin to sign your name onto it. In addition, maybe there's a Bible verse that is meaningful to you that you want to write on there. 
Or maybe it's the name of somebody that you would love to come to begin to follow Jesus. Whatever it might be, we want you to write it on there. We're gonna take those and install them into our building. Really is a step of faith to say, God, you've seen the sacrifice and you've seen the prayers. You've seen the giving and you've seen the dreaming. You've seen the serving. You've seen all of us coming together because, God, we want something to last well beyond us, something that will ripple throughout eternity. And as we embark on this new school year and this new building, I'm gonna ask you to pray. I'm gonna ask you to pray a lot and maybe pray for more for Riverway than you ever have in your whole life. And today on the way out, you're gonna receive a bookmark that looks just like this. And this bookmark on the front just says Riverway Church exists to help people find and follow Jesus. But on the back, there are four prayers praying for our home. And I want you to put it in your Bible. I want you to put it on a mirror. I want you to put it in your car or in your cubicle, somewhere where you can see it every day and begin to say these four prayers. And here's the things we're gonna ask you to pray for. For completion of the project to go smoothly. Right, as we have another seven months of completion and projects, for these to continue to go smooth, for there to not be delays in our building, for finances to stay under wraps, just two weeks ago, we got word of an additional 40000 that we weren't expecting uh, in, in fees, and, and we had some contaminated dirt we had to continue to remove. So we're gonna continue to prov provide two, number two. We're gonna pray also for financial provision and generous hearts. For those that are able to give, to keep giving, that God would bless people in new ways and they would see that as a blessing for God and begin to help this building get built. Number three, for many people to begin to follow Jesus. Because even before we open these doors, I'm telling you, there's a lot of interest around what's happening and people are gonna begin checking it out this fall. People are gonna begin checking out Riverway this winter. And we're praying that many of them, maybe who are giving church another try again, or maybe who have never thought about faith and thought about engaging with God, they're stepping in and something would happen in their hearts. Maybe what I'm most proud about is in the last 12 months, we've had 68 adults who have decided to follow Jesus. 68 adults. I remember talking to a friend of mine who was a staff member at another church. She said, growing up, she said, we would celebrate if we had like even one person in an entire year who would come to faith in Jesus. But 68, in addition to that, we had more than 30 teenagers cross the line of faith this last year. So all in all, 100 people that said yes to following Jesus. And can I tell you something? You are the reason why. Your giving and your serving and your sacrifice are drawing people into environments where they can meet Jesus. So I want us to continue to pray for that, for your friends, for your neighbors, for your family members, for your coworkers to begin to following Jesus. And then number four, for new opportunities to reach and bless our community. That once we have this building, what is this gonna mean for us? I want you to begin praying about that and saying, God, what would you put in my heart to do? What would you put in my heart to be a part of? And even right around the corner, we have so many opportunities. We have Family Fun Fest. In just a couple weeks, please sign up today if you haven't to serve. Family Fun Fest around the corner. And then on the 15th, we have our big tailgate party. It's gonna be so much fun. Invite a friend to that. We're starting a brand new series on that weekend called Guardrails. And it's all about protecting your life and your family for the future. How do you do that so you don't go off the rails? And next week, we're gonna have 70,000 mailers that are gonna hit people's homes. They're gonna talk about the tailgate party and guardrails and all of these things and winning Vikings tickets. And can I tell you something? They're not gonna come just because of a mailer, but they're gonna see the mailer and then you're gonna say to them, hey, would you come and sit with me at church? We're starting this brand new series and I'm wondering if you'd come sit with me. We'd go grab lunch afterwards or whatever. And I'm telling you, as you begin to reach out to those people around you, God's gonna use it. This next year is gonna be incredible. And I wanna say from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Thank you for being part of something bigger than yourself. Thank you for being a part of something that has eternal implications. 
that has life change implications and community change implications. And together, God's gonna use us to great things. And I wanna echo what you heard on the video, that a great church is not built on the talents of a few, but rather on the sacrifices of many. And as I look back over the last 13 years, and even this last year specifically, I see people who continually show up to sacrifice and serve and give and use their talents and their strengths to build the kingdom of God. And can I tell you, it's something that your heavenly father applauds because you're making him known. And so as we go into this next year, I want our focus to be on him building our lives. Building our lives with the intention of us using our lives to help build other people's lives. That it would be people helping people find and follow Jesus. For him to use our lives, our finances, our talents, our time, our ability to move his kingdom forward. God, build our lives. We build it on the foundation of Jesus because it's the only thing that is rock solid in life. And then as we build our life on him, he gives us the love and the grace and the eyes to see those around us so our lives can be filled with purpose, to be filled with his purposes. So would you pray with us? God, here we are. We're surrendering our lives to you yet again. So say, God, would you use us to reach so many more people around us that need to hear of your love and your forgiveness and your grace. And we want to be a part of that. God, we want to be a part of what you're doing in, in our communities around us for you to use our lives in this way to make a difference throughout all of eternity. So Jesus, give us eyes to see like you see. Give us a heart to feel like you feel. Give us ears to hear what you hear. That we might be your hands and feet to the world around us. And that this next year would be an amazing year as we see this building become a lighthouse in our community. We're so grateful for your provision and so grateful for all the ways that you are gonna change our lives because of it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.